I'll take my revenge, Hellspawn. Starting with you! You were sent by them? All villains of the Spawn universe explored. Todd McFarlane's Spawn, despite not being a member of the DC or Marvel family, continues to brag about a universe which is home to a horde of underrated, unparalleled villains. When you have a central character who is better addressed as the anti of anti-heroes, it is only fair on his part to have a rogues gallery filled with the most dangerous, sadistic and soulless ones. Well, today's video is for every fan of Spawn out there. Gear yourselves up as we are about to explore every, we repeat, every ruthless villain from his universe. Are you ready? Let's do this then! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. later. This supervillain by Todd McFarlane indisputably deserves the first place in the list, as the most recurring and vicious villain of the comic book series, Violator is a constant tormentor, who was first sent to Earth to serve as a demonic guardian to Spawn. It is true that his character has been killed several times, but that is only for him to make a comeback deadlier than before. The eldest and the most powerful of the Flebiac brothers, Violator is most certainly not the demon to be taken lightly. His job besides proving Proving his superiority to Malab Bolgia and impressing him includes toughening up Hell's Ponds so as to execute Malab Bolgia's desire of assembling an army for Hell. While his true form happens to be a nightmarish looking demon with a penchant for murder and mayhem, he is often seen as a 3 feet 10 inches tall, ugly looking, overweight, bald clown, one that has this blue paint on his face resembling the letter M. The fact that Violator is an intermediary demon within Hell's ranking automatically makes him exceedingly powerful and in possession of superhuman strength, stamina, durability, agility and an exceptional healing factor. He can rip out a Hellspawn's heart using just a single hand, survive high caliber gunshots that are quite capable of killing a human being and also breathe flames. That's not all. The necroplasm magic that he possesses makes him capable of teleportation, raising the dead, necromancy, size alteration, shape shifting and shooting energy blasts among other abilities. Personality wise, he is very deceptive, playing with the minds of the same people and still having them into believing him and falling for his tricks. That's why later for you. Male Bolgia. Meet the OG of the comic book series, the malefic Male Bolgia, who has been around for more than 70,000 years. Well, to begin with, Male Bolgia is the infamous devil that offered CIA assassin Al Simmons a Faustian deal and caused him to be Spawn in the first place. Of course, the deal came with conditions and the rest, as you all know, is history. A creation of Leviathan, the preceding leader of the 8th circle of hell, Malabolgia became so powerful that he ended up betraying and killing his own creator to become the new ruler. His position in hell's hierarchy, his obsession with hellspawns and his expertise in necroplasm gave him the power to create hellspawns and during his very rule, he created an entire battalion of hellspawns that was capable of tearing down heaven. Often regarded as an equal to Satan, this satanic master manipulator is feared by everyone and for obvious reasons. When it is the devil that we are talking about, it goes without saying that he is blessed with extreme levels of demonic powers. There is telepathy via which he can easily read the minds of his victims. Next, there is mind control followed by psychokinesis, shape-shifting abilities, regeneration skills and superhuman levels of strength. He is also seen bragging about necro energies which include raising the dead, dimensional manipulation and the power to morph and influence illusions. Also let's not disregard the fact that he is very deceptive. After all, he did trick Spawn into serving him for his own cause. Urizen 
Imagine a dark deity so powerful that hell and heaven literally had to join forces together and for the first time may we add, banish him. Well, what else do you think can be done to someone who is older than time and in all probability older than Satan too? The fact that he is immortal points to a simple thing. He can't be killed, but he can be contained. Urizen's solitary aim in life was to devour souls, thereby setting them free from the circle of life and death and prolonged disputes as a means of cleansing the universe. No wonder his actions bothered the factions of hell and heaven and they did what they had to. But having said that, it is also pretty easy to liberate the Ancient One from his exile and summon him. What you need is a full moon, 13 of Urizen's dedicated zealots and a sacrificial ceremony. Speaking of Urizen's powers and abilities, remember the more he consumes souls, the bigger and stronger he becomes. His shape-shifting ability deserves a special mention, especially his appearance in smoke form. He is quite capable of radiating animosity in the human minds and making them commit dreadful things. After all, his hobby is to wreak havoc and create mass destruction. Then there's his superhuman strength, adding to that durability, endurance, energy absorption, necromancy, as well as regeneration skills. Also, it would be a sin to miss out on his penant stare. Anyone who dares to look into the eyes of Urizen will be driven to a state of complete madness. Satan While it is true that Malabolgia was believed to be the devil and in some cases even treated like one, he was just serving himself as an adjutant to the true face of evil. No points for guessing that we are talking about the Prince of Darkness here, or in simple words, Satan, who has always been the ultimate monarch of hell. Both God and Satan happen to be children of the creator of the universe and all its worlds. Satan not only wanted full control of Earth, but also wanted to defeat God. In fact, it was Satan who put together the plans of other Dark Lords and Demons, so much so that even Malabolgia and Mammon were to answer to the will of the undisputed ruler of Hell as he was feared by every other demon residing in Hell. The character of Satan was introduced to us in the 158th issue of the Spawn comic series. He is shown behind the newly empowered Katie Fitzgerald as a humongous humanoid, one with horns and a forked tail. Speaking of his powers and abilities, Satan is nigh omnipotent which means that he possesses the ability to do nearly anything. We already know that he is immortal and this automatically makes him invulnerable. He is immune to every form of physical damage. Now add to that the superhuman strength of a cosmic being, leadership traits and his knowledge of everything. Billy Kincaid The fact that he is neither a hellspawn nor a demon but a normal looking human being instead easily makes him one of the worst villains on this list. What we are looking at is a deranged murderous pedophile, one who happens to be a recurring villain in the comic book series. Spawn as Al Simmons was signed up for killing Kincaid, but the police got to him before he could execute his mission. Post Kincaid's early discharge from the psychiatric institution, he was back to his old hobby, calling himself the ice cream man, luring innocent children inside the ice cream truck and continuing his child killing spree. Well, it is only fair that Spawn gave Kincaid a fittingly horrifying death, but does that mark an end to this character? Absolutely not. We were pretty serious when we referred to him as a recurring antagonist. Kincaid comes back newly empowered only to have Spawn sever his head. Does that mean we finally get to bid him goodbye? We suggest you think before you say yes. Kincaid is a character that cannot just die and then remain dead. So it goes without saying that he comes back again and this time as a ghost possessing people and making them commit crimes that are based on their most violent impulses and in the process damn their souls too. Here he's also seen jumping from one body to the other thereby growing much more powerful than before and making it impossible for anybody to stop him. We are glad that after a lot of planning and plotting he was ultimately put an end to. The Redeemer also known as the Anti-Spawn, the Redeemer happens to be Heaven's very own counterpart of the Hellspawn, but the holier version of course. What we are talking about is a righteous warrior, 
one who is blended with celestial matter to battle the very forces of darkness. So apparently the ethereal masters every once in a while turn to the star hive to generate these virtuous warriors, or in other words, dedicated soldiers of God. Only human beings that are worthy enough to be the hosts of the Redeemer are chosen by the Star Hive and reconstructed as celestial fighters with elemental fire to battle out their demonic peers. Mind you, the Redeemer will neither be aware of his former life as the Redeemer nor will he remember becoming the Redeemer post coming back to the human world. Much like the Hellspawns, the Redeemers have the same level of fury inside their souls. But then again, the essence of their rage is that of light and not darkness. Speaking of the Redeemer's abilities, his body is charged with elemental fire that he can make use of to project a diverse array of energy blasts. He also boasts the power of teleportation, which means his capability to teleport by transforming his body into a blue energy. So far, there have been three hosts. Jason Wynn was the first host, but he was eventually proven to be not worthy because of his lack of purity. Next, we have had the pious ex-convict Phil Temper, who was certainly stronger than Wynn, but did not last as the Redeemer for a longer duration. The third and the current host is Eddie Frank, who unquestionably happens to be way more powerful than Wynn and Temper, but somehow he retained his past life memories prior to becoming the Redeemer. We are stressing on his false hatred for Spawn. <laughs> Chapel. Al Simmons, thanks to his high kill count, would have anyway landed in hell. But if there's someone who acted as a true catalyst for him to become Spawn in the first place, it has to be Simmons' fellow comrade, the traitorous Chapel also known as Bruce Stinson. Had Chapel not been commissioned by his corrupted superior Jason Wynn to take Simmons down, none of the following events would have taken place. After Spawn gained back his memory and realized it was Chapel who killed him, he, for obvious reasons, went after him. Post his confrontation with Spawn, Chapel could clearly comprehend that he does not really stand a chance against his newly resurrected colleague. But at the same time, he was very inquisitive to know how Simmons resurrected as Spawn. Post getting to know of Hell and the whole process of Hellspawn, he got super intrigued, shot himself in the very head and committed suicide. All of this as part of his plan. Of course he was brought back, but not as Hellspawn. The chapel was resurrected as Lord Chapel, or in other words, as a horseman of the apocalypse. Now that he was in service of the devil, the latter obviously had plans for him. Speaking of Chapel's powers and abilities, he's proficient in military training, hand-to-hand -hand combatant, marksmanship, martial arts, swordsmanship, unconventional warfare like torture methods, tracking, and add to that, superhuman strength and his level of intelligence. Overt Kill he is certainly not to be confused with the recurring enemy of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This one here was born a troublemaker and as Nicholas Rocca, and unlike anyone Spawn has ever crossed his paths with. Once a human with a dark past, Overt Kill was pretty much similar to Spawn's Al Simmons and in a lot of ways may we add. Rocca used to work for the mob as a leg breaker and soon became a trained assassin. All went well for Rocca until a counter-attack from a rival Mafia boss fatally injured him. Full credits to his obsessive, brilliant scientist half-brother Dr. Eileen Hessman who struck up a deal with Luciano Bartino, the mob boss Rocca used to work with, and had his brother rebuilt into an ultra-killing machine. That's how Rocca was resurrected as a killer cyborg, or in other words, the all-new powerful Overt Kill. This one-man wrecking crew was eventually hired by Tony Twist to get rid of Spawn, and mind you, he did go to extreme levels to lure Spawn out of hiding. But regardless of Overt Kill's cybernetically augmented eye that lets him fire laser blasts despite his barium armor capable of enduring exceeding levels of damage, and in spite of him in possession of superhuman strength, and add to those laser cannons, armor-piercing guns, and mounted rockets, Spawn was successful in putting an end to him once and for all. Hey, that still makes him deadly, and you know that for a fact. The Flebiac Brothers 
Also known as the Demonic Five Brothers, the group consists of Violator, Vindicator, Vandalizer, Vaporizer, and Vaxillator. Born from the Phlebotan spirit, the Flebiac brothers are dwellers of hell, residing precisely in the Eighth Circle. They simply exist to bring about chaos and add to that suffering. As servants of Malabolgia, the demonic siblings are in possession of extreme levels of strength and insusceptibility along with regenerative, shape-shifting, possessive and telepathic powers. Violator is the eldest among the brothers and needless to say the most powerful one. The action of him slaughtering his own father pleased Melibolgia to such an extent that the latter made him his chief lieutenant in hell and also put him in charge of grooming and training new hellspawns. Vindicator is given the task to test the newly arrived souls through the very bowels of hell. He is the one to have tested Billy Kincaid after the latter woke up in hell. Next, we have Vandalizer, who absolutely loads Violator. It is only fair to address him as a brute, one who believes that he is the strongest amongst his brothers and always wants to prove his superiority over Violator. Vaporizer is the largest among the brothers, huge enough to gobble up a full-grown man. Lastly, there is Vaxillator, the smallest in the group and much like his name, the indecisive one. Sorry for the inconvenience, Senator. I trust we didn't interrupt anything deeply personal. But I thought this needed Jason Wynn. One doesn't have to be a demon or a killer cyborg in this list to be categorized as a supervillain. We are talking about Jason Wynn, the director of the United States Security Group and in all possibilities, the most influential man in the world. Right from having politicians on his payroll to literally orchestrating the actions of the Central Intelligence Agency, Wynn is the one accountable for the death of Al Simmons. The master controller got rid of Simmons just because the latter started asking him difficult questions. Is he ruthless? Of course he is. Is he corrupt? Add sadistic to that and make that a double yes. Always on the search for more power, Wynn went to the extent of employing the deranged child serial killer Billy Kincaid to kidnap and kill the 8-year-old daughter of Senator Jennings. In case you did not know, it was also Wynn who made use of his powerful position and shortened Kincaid's prison time, getting the latter to serve the sentence for just 5 years. Wynn had his voracious nature on display when he made a deal with Malabolgia. He bartered the soul of Simmons for psychoplasm, or in simple words, the very essence of what hell is made of. For those who are wondering if that gave him an upper hand or not, no, it did not. Not only was Wynn destroyed by Spawn, but he was also proven to be not worthy as the Redeemer because of his lack of purity. Mammon Say hello to one of the Forgotten Ones who was exiled to Hell and established himself as one of the most powerful beings in Hell. Lord Mammon, as he is often addressed, served as the Lord of the Ninth Circle post-killing Therifer. As a master of manipulation, he does not fancy getting his own hands dirty, but if he has to, he will. He is often seen making tempting deals with the humans in exchange for their souls. And mind you, Mammon can be pretty much persuasive regarding the things that he desires. It is only fair to call him a master conspirator as he is responsible for most of the events that have led to Simmons becoming Spawn. He yearns to remake the universe as per his vision and is on the lookout for the throne of creation to fulfill his desire. In the hopes of creating the eventual hellspawn that would be reigning by his side, Mammon's gone to the whole extent of manipulating the bloodlines of Al and Wanda. Mind you, Malabolgia is nothing but a flea when it comes to Mammon. However, when it comes to power, he is immensely overshadowed not only by Satan but also by Malabolgia for that matter. Speaking of Mammon's abilities, this demonic mastermind brags the power of immortality, telekinesis, manipulation, necromancy, shape-shifting, flight and possession, adding to that a genius level intellect and superhuman strength. Sigor Michael Konitsny was both a friend and a teammate of Al Simmons before he turned into a human-gorilla hybrid. Post learning the truth about the murder of Simmons, Konitsny wanted to expose Jason Wynn. But before he could do that, he was purposely detained and forced to take part in the Simian experiment called Project Sim. Call it a mathematical accident while programming, the neurologist who headed the program ended up creating Cygor while transferring human brain patterns into an ape. 
short of cybernetic gorilla, Cygor started out at 80% gorilla instead of 80% human. And we all know what that means. Believing Al Simmons to be his creator, Cygor tracked him down to New York with the sole purpose of destroying him, only to have Spawn defeat him. Now when it is a cyborg that we are talking about, he is bound to brag a lot of powers such as cybernetic enhancement, superhuman strength, speed, agility, sight, and even senses. These are followed by mechanokinesis, which points out the fact that Cygor is very much capable of removing his own self-destruct and tracking devices so as to not let anybody locate him. Then there's accelerated healing, which should not come as a surprise to you all. We are talking about a cyborg here. Repairing wounds and running self-diagnostics, it all comes with the package. The Freak Also known as Brian Kulbitsky, this psychopath has suffered from exceeding levels of delirium, simply because his former spouse told him that she did not want to have kids. Of course, he was sent to a mental asylum, but he eventually absconded from there and settled down in the sewers. During his encounter with Spawn, the freak made up his own story, telling him how his entire family was done away with by Dr. Delirium. Later, when he looked for revenge on the doctor, he was incapacitated by the guards of the doctor and put through unthinkable experiments. Moved by his story, Spawn made up his mind to help him get his vengeance, oblivious to the fact that he was just aiding the freak in killing his therapist. Well, it is only fair to say that Spawn gave the freak a fitting death upon learning the truth and had the latter devoured by worms. There was a time when Malabolje possessed the freak, took over his body and had him exhibit an array of demonic powers. This included immortality, possession, teleportation, superhuman strength, stamina, speed and your ability along with sharpened claws and the ability to absorb energy and take physical and mental control over another living being. Oh, in case we have missed out on this, the freak was also quite skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. God Spawn this supernatural deity here happens to be the cosmic twin brother of Satan, and in spite of his name isn't the ultimate supreme being. For those of you wondering who bags that title, it obviously goes to the mother of existence. God hated Satan, and the feeling was mutual. This resulted in them declaring war against one another. Since the entities didn't really have the power to destroy each other, they only brought about immense destruction. With God creating humanity, Satan gave them free will. However, with both the entities eventually becoming obsessed with acquiring human souls, Mother put them to sleep in a forgotten corner of the universe. However, she decided to give the cosmic twins another chance and brought them back as two human twins. The plan was to make them live in the midst of humanity and make them change their ways. But with the twins literally wrecking chaos and the situation going out of control, Zira had to intervene and had God return back to heaven to his former glory. This was followed by God and Satan both assembling their armies and launching the Armageddon, only to be opposed by an empowered Spawn who was left with no other choice but to reduce Earth to a wasteland. With the two obliterating Spawn, Mother was utterly disappointed by her children and left them alone in a barren world, thus dispossessing them of the only thing they had spent an eternity fighting over. Speaking of God's abilities, he brags about the gift of immortality, vast divine powers, invulnerability, super strength, and adds to that is near endless rage, one that's capable of turning the entire planet into ash. Raven Spawn there is no denying that Ravenspawn was introduced in the Hellspawn series as one of the Death Knights of Malabolgia. He was sent to Earth primarily on a mission and no point in guessing that was to torture the existing Hellspawn which happens to be none other than our very own Spawn. Ravenspawn is also seen making another appearance in the Adventures of Spawn, but this time as one of the ancient Lords of Darkness, Cravon Gore. Well, for those who are wondering who this demonic lord is, he is the one who has created or let's say commissioned the construction of K7 Letha, which is otherwise known as the Hellspawn suit. Anyway, coming back to the storyline, the super suit made Kravon Gore invincible and he declared war for obvious reasons. No points for guessing that he brought about immense destruction, but in due course, Kravon was defeated. As for the suit, it was locked away within the Necro Stone, and anyone who would lay their hands on the ancient stone would be blessed with the power of the suit. The Curse 
All Philip Cron ever wanted was to gain access to heaven, and for that, he was ready to go to great extents. He deliberately went blind, had his face disfigured, and also got rid of his right arm to prove his devotion to God. When his prayers were not answered, he attended college, became filthy rich, and read up on the occult. Oh, he even made use of technology to build himself a bionic arm. Soon he learned about Spawn, and thinking of him to be some kind of a heavenly soldier, he made up his mind to kill him and have access to his powers. His plan backfired with Spawn blowing off his new arm and leaving him hanging on one of the walls in Rat City. He was eventually discovered and freed by the demon hunter John Sansker, only to end up getting further tortured by him. Anyway. The curse finally found his way back home, having freed himself from Sansker and started plotting his revenge on Spawn. He had his minions lay a trap for Spawn and had him transported to him. The curse wanted to dissect Spawn in the hopes of finding the very source of his evil, but he did not really stand a chance while facing Spawn's K7 Letha that had him cut in half. His failed attempts in destroying Spawn eventually made him turn his attention towards comprehending the dynamics of Hell so as to overthrow Malvolgia and recreate Hell as per his vision. Zira Meet Zira, the queen of the Seraphims who categorically happens to be the most powerful creation of God. Feared by heaven and to an extent by God as well, the angelic warrior exhibited extreme levels of bloodlust along with madness. Her actions left God no choice but to imprison her in the very depths of heaven. In spite of being sealed away, she remained loyal and respected the decision of God, never even once questioning him. With the Forgotten Ones ambushing heaven and attempting to get their hands on the throne, Zira was freed from imprisonment and battled against the Forgotten Ones. The fact that she slaughtered them all should not surprise you at all, given her perennial thirst for battles and superhuman strength. Zira certainly deserves a special mention for her battle against Spawn. She did put up a great match, cutting Spawn literally in two halves, but the latter's regenerative ability prevented him from dying and healing up his wounds at the same instant. In the end, all that was left of Zira was her severed head, which was eventually devoured by demon dogs. Margaret Love as a philanthropist, Margaret Love happened to be a recipient of the Lambier Award, and she was also the founder and president of the homeless shelter program Heal the World. But as the Soviet agent Nadia Vladova, she was only using her program to kidnap the homeless, make them part of a grisly cyborg experiment, and have them altered into robotic killing machines. What we're looking at is a crazy scientist, one whose area of interest was gruesome mind control experiments. Speaking of her mad fantasy, she wished to build a cyborg weapon using the harvested heads of all the vagrants she had tricked so far. Her program was nothing but a cover for her heinous deeds. Oh, Margaret even had the ultimate solution for human greed, a global nuclear attack. Not too surprising at all. Okay, she might have been one-shot villain in an interesting Spawn Batman crossover, but there is no denying that Margaret Love did prove herself to be quite the villain, an insanely dangerous one may we add to Spawn. A century to follow appropriate protocol and maybe I'll reconsider. Gabriel. Say hello to the shady angel from heaven, one who actually put a hit on Spawn. As the director of the Terran Affairs headquarters, Gabriel had a very low opinion of Angela, constantly reminding the latter that she was a freelance angel. However, Gabriel did give Angela permission to hunt down Spawn because of her hunting permit. For those of you who are not aware, a hunting permit grants a freelance angel the right to hunt a hellspawn even in a restricted area. Also, in case you did not know, Jason Wynn would not have been the first redeemer had Gabriel not gotten in touch with the orbital angel station in the first place and arranged for the celestial fire to be imbued in Wynn. Putting stress on Gabriel's hatred for Angela, the former went to the extent of framing the latter and even testified against her, stating that Angela was involved in illicit hunting activities. Of course, the truth surfaced and Gabriel was stripped off her position and also arrested for pressing fraudulent charges. One thing's for sure, you do not want Gabriel in your team. <laughs> Merrick Spawn a top-class assassin, Merrick is known for doing her job. As the A1 soldier of Jason Wynn, she is known for crimes that include contract killing, conspiracy, as well as murder. This right-hand mercenary here, boasting skills of leadership, gunmanship, and military training, is certainly not the one to be taken lightly. 
A little bit of digging into her past life shows Merrick having a hard contract with another assassin called Leon against the Russian mob. But Merrick having got hit was not only left behind, but was also abused gravely, may we add. As an elite agent of Wynn, Merrick is seen working as the eyes and ears of Wynn's operations. She is also the one to carefully plan and strategize the missions. She is savage in terms of her mission and does not like to leave behind any witnesses. Mind you, she is capable of murdering in cold blood if it is required. Now there is no denying that Merrick's outstanding when it comes to her being an assassin. But it does not matter if she's brilliant or even extraordinary for that matter. She did not really stand a chance against Spawn. No wonder Merrick's encounter with Spawn at Wynn's office left her in a very bad shape. Katie Fitzgerald Without a doubt, one of the all-embracing antagonists of the series here. While Katie is seen to be one of the miracle twins of Wanda and Terry Fitzgerald, we do not have a lot of different names for this character. Some call her Lucifer and some refer to her as the Prince of Darkness. But if you ask us, we'd like to go with Satan, because she actually is the ultimate monarch of hell. For those who are wondering how can Satan be a normal human girl, well this is where the mother of existence comes into the picture along with her very children, God and Satan. With her cosmic children hating one another and always fighting and declaring war, mother put God and Satan to sleep in a forgotten corner of the universe. But given the fact that they were her children, she decided to give them another chance and brought them back as two human twins, Satan as Katie and God as Jake. While the plan was to make them appreciate humanity and alter their way of thinking, it obviously did not work out. Morana You might have seen her as this cloaked figure behind Mammon. Morana, better known as Morana Simmons, happens to be miscarried daughter of Al Simmons and Wanda Blake. While she is considered to have been killed by her father even before she was born, that is clearly not the case. In reality, Morana was abducted right at birth by Mammon and also raised by the Lord of Hell, eventually becoming one of the greatest hell spawns under the latter's care and guidance. No wonder she disliked her parents, thinking that they threw her away because they never liked her. Morana under the command of Mammon proved herself to be quite dangerous given her hellspawn abilities which include superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, as well as metamorphosis. Tiffany Competitive would be the right word to describe this warrior angel here, one who also happens to be a hellspawn slayer. Not much is known about her background except the fact that she saw Angela as her rival and was quite envious of her popularity. In fact, she was more than happy to believe Angela to be a traitor after she heard about her letting Spawn escape. After all, this was the opportunity that Tiffany had been waiting for, the opportunity to prove herself as the top-notch Hellspawn hunter in Heaven's Army. While she did ambush Spawn and was literally on the verge of decapitating him, she failed to execute her mission. With Spawn summoning the creatures of the night, which included bats, wolves, as well as bears, Tiffany was horribly defeated. It's fair to say that her physical body was mauled by the creatures and she lost the fight. Simon Pure Meet this recurring antagonist who happens to be the leader of a vampire cult known as the Kingdom. The cult was of the opinion that they were God's chosen ones, the descendants of the twelve apostles of Jesus. Led by the religious fanatic Simon Pure, he took charge of bringing about a cleansing that would obliterate the sinners and make them the rightful leaders of earth. Pure ended up assembling an army of 777 vampires, each of them deprived of their vision but blessed with a strange second sight, somehow letting them see the evil doers marked with a letter S on their very foreheads. The plan to slaughter the sinners backfired on Pure, with Spawn absorbing all the city's sins into himself. Next, he turned Pure's own followers against him by marking him with an S and deliberately tricking the followers into committing sins against their very own. And if that wasn't all, he even had them sent to hell through a portal made by the demon Ab. Scott McMillan Corrupt Senator Scott McMillan happens to be the father of deranged serial child killer Billy Kincaid. Now we aren't sure exactly when, but at some stage in his career, he did have an affair that led to the birth of Kincaid. The senator, who was running for the post of the president, did everything in his power to keep the bizarre desires of his son a hush-hush affair from the public eye. Apparently, Macmillan was quite guilty of being absent and not there for Kincaid for the major parts of the latter's life. Known for misuse of power, cover-ups, murder by proxy, 
fraud, conspiracy, and evidence tampering, McMillan is seen taking the aid of Jason Wynn and making use of his vast connections, wealth, and politics to keep his son's actions a private affair. Knowing Wynn, he aided in funding McMillan's presidential campaign, which obviously went down post Kincaid's death, and his actions getting disclosed to the public. Admonisher what we are dealing with here is a human mercenary, one whose name is still echoed by the creatures of hell. The admonisher for his voracious nature and tracking skills, and add to that, his uncontrollable desire to kill people, was hired by Tony Twist to hunt down the violator. The mafia boss having had enough failures, we are stressing on overt kills defeat, and violator slaughtering his men enlisted the help of the admonisher to get rid of the demon. The mercenary took the job, despite knowing who he was standing up against and traced Violator down to a mall. However, the intervention of the other Flebiac brothers foiled his mission. Unbeknownst to the admonisher, the demonic brothers had no intention of having their name get tainted by having a demon, in this case Violator, get crushed in the hands of a human being. Therefore, the intervention and the act of protection. In fact, there came a time when the admonisher actually got swallowed by one of the demonic brothers. No points for guessing, it was Vaporizer, who is indeed the largest amongst the Flebiac brothers, and as mentioned before, he was big enough to gobble up a full-grown man. It is a different thing that the admonisher made his way out of the demon simply by blowing a hole from the inside. It is only fair to say that he sent the brothers literally screaming back to hell. Tremor Spawn Born as Richard Masulo, Tremor is a former mobster who got abducted by his boss, or in other words, Tony Twist. The Mafia boss ended up using him for the Mafia Super Soldier program, and as the name of the program suggests, the plan was to form a Super Soldier for the Mafia. The program mutated him into a cybernetic beast. The inclusion of the process of splicing and gene manipulation gave Masulo a demonic appearance, thereby giving him the name Tremor. With Tremor holding on to his free will, the program was deemed as a failure and him as a failed prototype. Twist went to greater extents by not only killing Masulo's whole family, but also having Tremor locked up in a lab. But with Tremor managing to escape from the laboratory, he vows to settle scores with Twist and is often seen waging his own wars against the Mafia. Often termed as the predecessor of Overt Kill, Tremor boasts a multitude of powers that are similar to the former. There are his superhuman strength, reflexes, durability, and regeneration skills along with sharpened claws and fangs as a result of his mutation. The Disciple Meet the greatest warrior of heaven, one who is also addressed as the predecessor of the Redeemer. Mind you, one does not really know much about his origins, but by the look of him, he certainly seems to be an intimidating enemy when it comes to the Hellspawns. Speaking of his appearance, the black suit that he dons is covered in silver armor. Add a mask to that and a cross, just like the Redeemer. Next, you can't miss out on the flaming 12 that's over his right eye. Just a glance at the condition of his armor and mask, it will be fair to address him as someone who has a generous share of battle damage. As the first and the greatest soldier of heaven, the disciple is seen to possess similar powers to that of the Redeemer, but way more amplified. He not only brags the power of pyrokinesis, but he is also capable of controlling the flames as per his will. Also, the celestial fire is seen to take the shape of wings on his back. Drug Reverend Say hello to this calm yet ruthless drug-dealing priest, one who is all about pushing drugs. While he is seen to possess a certain religious belief, we are not sure if he truly means it or if the whole thing is just an act to make the drug dealings easier. After all, the whole purpose of him coming to Rat City in the first place, along with his armed henchmen, was for him to continue with his drug dealings and spread his territory. It should not come as a surprise to you at all when we tell you that the drug reverend had his own plans of taking over Rat City. He meant business and went on to the extent of even employing children to sell drugs for him. The fact that the Reverend did not care about the lives of the homeless at all and that he was pretty okay with his worshippers doing whatever they liked with the homeless made him earn the wrath of Spawn. Not only does Spawn end up killing and slaughtering the satanic worshippers, but he also leaves the Reverend in the hands of the homeless, who give him a fitting death. Tony Twist HBO Series this excessively short-tempered Italian Mafia boss is known for throwing tantrums the minute he doesn't like something, or let's say things don't work according to the way that he wants them to. 
Hell, he will even scream at his own henchmen. To call him frustrated would be the right term given that Spawn had been after his men, exterminating them one after the other. Much like his appearances in the comics, he is shown to be this broad man, he has slick black hair, is seen wearing shades most of the time, and does not have a finger on his left hand. Most of the time, you will find him donning a black business suit over a pink shirt and yellow tie. The HBO series shows Antonio Twistelli helping Jason Wynn to hunt down Spawn, having had enough of him killing his men. The wrathful crime lord is known for crimes like attempted murder, conspiracy, kidnapping, and no points for guessing, organized crime. Nice outfit, asshole. Jessica Priest she is deranged, she is barbarous. Meet Jessica Priest, the schizophrenic murderer who loves to kill. A skilled marksman, great with bladed weapons and brilliant at tracking with exceptional strategic analysis skills, Priest has had her superhuman reflexes on display on more than one occasion. This not only lets her dodge incoming bullets, but also gives her an edge at literally every gunfight. Her character is seen serving as a replacement for Chapel as Jason Wynn's loyal and cold-blooded assassin in the 1997 film adaptation of Spawn. Yes, she is the one who is accountable for shooting, beating, and setting Al Simmons on fire, thereby killing him. To be honest, Priest was never really of sound mind. Would you call someone sane who, at a tender age of five, took out lighter liquid, poured it on her sleeping parents, and set the whole house on fire? All of this because she got intrigued while watching marshmallows get roasted on fire. To top things off, she did not even have any regret about it. Post enduring many years of shock therapy, she was considered mentally fit and discharged from the mental hospital. Priest proved everyone wrong by going on a killing rampage with the sole mission of exterminating every jerk in the world. This led her to get locked up in some remote prison, never to be released again. She had only served a few years when she was paid a visit by none other than Jason Wynn, who offered her a deal, one that she happily accepted. The rest, as you all know, is history. Lily Spawn Lily is first introduced in the third season of Todd McFarlane's Spawn as a young girl, probably in her teens coming to a bus stop. Next, she is seen getting involved in the alley murders near Rat City. Soon it gets pretty clear that she is far more than just a normal teenage girl, and exceptionally great when it comes to playing innocent. Well, meet Lily the Vampire. Yes, you heard that right. She was actually sent by heaven, or let's say offered a deal by heaven, to kill the Hellspawn that one of their own could not. Given her own bitterness towards Hellspawn, which grew because of her tragic past, we are stressing the part where she was physically violated and torn open by a Hellspawn. She was not going to shy away from the fantastic opportunity. Anyway, post getting cursed to the life of a vampire, Lily was accountable for taking out the newest Hellspawn, and in this case, Al Simmons. Known for murder and mutilation, Lily did not just love killing her victims, she usually bled them dry. She also bragged powers like superhuman strength, speed, agility, manipulation, and trickery. Lily almost had Spawn killed, but the latter was smart enough to expose her to sunlight and kill her instead. Gretchen Culver As a pretty looking office manager for a boutique publishing house, Gretchen had everything going her way in life. She was also engaged to Wayne, the nice rich son of Donovan Tanager. But after crossing paths with the methodical serial killer John Mobley, her life took a complete 180 degree turn. While attempting to run away from Mobley after she caught the serial killer in action, Gretchen got hit by a police car. When she gained back her senses, not only did she find herself drugged, but was also horrified to find herself being physically violated by the very people who were supposed to help her out. With Gretchen trying to defend herself, she was beaten unconscious and handed over to Jeremiah Uton for disposal. Not only was Gretchen brutally murdered, but her body was also hacked up into a hundred pieces. Odessa, who happened to be a mysterious gypsy, upon finding Gretchen, stitched her and brought her back to life. The reincarnated Gretchen was also blessed by her remaker with special powers which included accelerated healing, superhuman reflexes, agility, and teleportation along with escapology, 
For those of you who are unaware of the particular term, it means she had the ability to dislocate or move her very bones because of the fact that she was actually stitched. This also made her easily evade handcuffs. Gretchen, reborn, started addressing herself as Suture, and the undead vengeful killer took revenge on all of her perpetrators, making each of them undergo violent deaths. Celestine As one of the most dedicated followers of heaven, Celestine was deadly as an angel. She would not just slaughter rebels, but would also don their teeth as a necklace. But soon she realized she enjoyed killing a lot more than serving God. When Celestine learned about the humans doing their research on interdimensional travel or hell to be more precise, she was sent to Earth to prevent the humans from doing so. She ambushed the Whiteside Pardon Institute after learning about one of the research scientists, Dr. Sally McAllister, having completed the research. But there she was not only tricked by Violator, but also had her heart ripped out by the demon. During her final moments, Celestine was able to activate McAllister's machine, which resulted in the whole facility being transported to hell. The remains of her body were found by one of the workers, Joseph Yalot, at the Whiteside Pardon Institute, who not only had intentions of reviving Celestine, but also wanted to have children with her. While Joseph did cast several magical spells around the facility to prevent the intervention of any creature from hell, he was killed before he could revive Celestine. The angel, in her afterlife, got to know how beings like her who killed were sent to hell instead of heaven. Determined to have her spot in heaven, Celestine became vengeful. Post getting resurrected by her followers, she waged a war against heaven. She was also seen resorting to the celestial fire to raise the dead and have them on her side. It's eventually revealed that Celestine was under the influence of none other than Malabolgia. Well, had it not been for Angela, Celestine's soul would have still been stuck in hell. Decay Spawn This superhuman creature here stays absolutely loyal to his name. He has the power to decompose anything and anyone and all he requires to do is touch and the job is done. He is found killing mob witnesses, utilizing his death touch at the time Al Simmons came back to Earth, forced his war in hell. Please note that Decay is a villain from the later issues for those of you who are wondering. Anyway, coming back to his storyline, Simmons, despite being deprived of his powers, decides to make Decay his first enemy. Post a bit of chasing and a brief fight, Decay is seen making the move Simmons had been waiting for and is seen falling off a building roof to his presumed death. Hell Spawn Who we have here happens to be one of the rulers of Hell, who was not only betrayed by Spawn, but also lost her throne in the process. With Violator saving her, she decided to return the favor and help him in his plans of gaining control over Jim Downing. A part of Violator's plan had him hide a bit of Malabolgia's power inside Sam Burke, after which he is seen instructing Hell to possess a human nurse so as to keep Burke unconscious. With Hell getting caught in the process, Violator gave her another new body to possess, the dead body of Susan Matthews. While Hell did occupy the corpse as her new vessel and went to the whole extent of continuing the life of Susan while posing as her, her identity was revealed eventually yet again. Only this time, Spawn did not even have the slightest bit of intention to spare her. Zab Meet Zab, short for Zabraxis, who is often addressed as a freelance demon. Zab has this unique power that allows him to open portals between two realms. No wonder Malabolgia enlisted Zab and his partner Ab's help in summoning the dark deity Urizen. The plan was simple, Malabolgia wanted Urizen to deal with Spawn. So while the demons were successful in summoning the Ancient One from his exile, the latter did not really stand a chance against Spawn. Terrified of the power and the things that Spawn was capable of doing, Zab revealed Malabolgia's intentions and how he hired the two demons into releasing Urizen. Later storylines have also shown Zab and his partner as minions of Spawn and opening doors for him. Besides creating portals to hell, Zab also has the ability to possess dead bodies. Ab Short for Abaddon, Ab is also a minor gate-opener demon like Zab. 
he was successful in liberating Urizen from his exile along with his partner by executing the sacrificial ceremony, thereby completing the opening spell. But upon witnessing Spawn effortlessly overthrow the Ancient One, he along with Zab gave away the information regarding Malabolgia to Spawn while stating to him the true intentions of the Dark Lord. Besides his ability to open gates, Ab is also capable of possessing corpses much like his partner. Jessica Mime This former adversary of Ant is anything but predictable. For starters, she is a super-powered mime, one who has a horde of gadgets at her disposal. Then she is also the leader of her gang, one that is known as Sidewalk Theater. Next, she is a schemer and has plans of eventually taking over the whole world. Now, when it comes to her personality, she is quite insecure about herself and it is only fair to say that she literally lies on the boundary of psychosis. While there's no denying that her character is absolutely comical, she is also capable of having a whole city within the palm of her very hand. She is famous for conspiracy, kidnapping, attempted murder and also terrorism to an extent. Speaking of her powers, she has the ability to create energy-based constructs. She is also seen exhibiting augmented agility and fighting skills. John Sansker This demon hunter is not just a regular vampire. He is also capable of transforming himself into a serpent. So this basically makes John Sansker half vampire, half serpent. It goes without saying that John has lived through centuries hunting down abominations that he thinks have tormented the world. We see him coming to New York looking for Spawn and tracking down his lair in Rat City. That is where he chances upon the crucified curse, one who was left behind by Spawn as a sign of warning. John is seen torturing the curse further for more information and with the latter feeding him with false information regarding Spawn, he is even more determined to pursue his target. With him finally coming face to face with Spawn, he is seen to engage in a fight with him for obvious reasons. But even with John disclosing his true form, we'd like to stress on the serpent hybrid monster which had John's head and torso. He was still defeated by Spawn. Belial Spawn Also addressed as the Dark Angel of Fear, Belial was once one of the top angels of God. He would have been given a rank even higher had he not been interrupted by his own vanity, thereby causing God to banish him. Well, that could only mean one thing. Belial chose hell and sided with the demons. He's even stated to have him addressed as the president of hell and Satan as the chairman. Coming back to the storyline, after Bernard Simmons, the father of Al Simmons, succumbed to cancer, Belial approached him. Now Spawn had already warned his father about demons approaching him and using him as leverage. No wonder Belial had the same intention. He wished to use Bernard as they did with Wanda Blake. But Spawn taking out his sword of the spirit, Belial was left with no other options but to let Bernard go. Spawn was safely able to lead his father to the judgment point. Abaddon Say hello to the most trusted general of the Dark Lord, Anti-Pope. It is reported that his tendrils tore through the very flesh of the humans as the dark forces forged their war on heaven for their final battle. With the human puppet Abel bringing Matthew Lanzo to Abaddon, he waited for Daniel Lanzo to arrive. Daniel was given a choice, either slay Matthew and direct his way towards heaven or let him turn towards the very forces of darkness. No points for guessing the choice made by Daniel. He teleported the boy to the very place that he wished to go in the first place, straight to his mother. Daniel, while teleporting, also made use of his powers to destroy Abaddon in the process. Heap Before he turned into the Heap, Eddie Beckett was just a normal street bum. He lost his wife to cancer and while mourning for his wife one day, he found a bag of necroplasm, one that was left behind by the freak. Not knowing about the powers of this magical substance, Eddie used it for drugs only to be shot by a bunch of drug dealers later. During his final moments, he was overwhelmed by some of the necroplasm eventually transforming him into the heap. No wonder he went on a rampage all over New York City after that. Now blessed with the powers of the green world, he was even capable of controlling elements like Earth. His fight with Spawn almost gave him the upper hand, but the latter managed to escape him. Soul Crusher Meet this killed fighter, one who is in possession of many weapons and add some wealth and power too. 
He is mostly seen wearing this gas mask, which we presume is mainly because of his card figure. You don't really want a personal visit from this guy, because a lot of times, he is seen gassing his victims to death. Well, the Soul Crusher also went after Cian Fitzgerald once, only to get himself caught up in a fight with none other than Spawn. While he did state to him that he meant no harm and that whatever he was doing was for the right reason, Spawn did not trust him. Soul Crusher ultimately got defeated and escaped from there. He is seen making more cameos, one of which has Spawn nearly torturing him to death, but stopping from doing so post seeing a vision of his wife and recalling his goals. With this, we finally come to an end of our video here. Do hit us with your thoughts in the comment section and let us know who your favorite villain in the Spawn universe is. Also, stay tuned with us for more interesting content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!